What's going on guys, my name's Theo at Tricks and welcome to episode 22 of my old school tips and tricks series. In these videos, I go through a variety of tips that you probably haven't heard before and they'll hopefully improve your in-game quality of life. The first trick of this episode is one I accidentally found while getting the farmer's outfit on my ultimate Iron Man. I do expect this to get patched, but it's not exactly game breaking, so I'm gonna show you guys anyway. When you're at the Tithe farm, there's a way to guarantee that you get 100 fruits per game. If you continue to stack up the fruits in your inventory, then drop them beside the door, exit the mini game, then grab more seeds and re-enter, you can pick up your fruits and you'll have 100 seeds plus the fruits from before. This allows you to make up for any failed fruits that you make during the mini game. So this way you can always get the 26 points that you get from 100 fruits. You can get more than 100 fruits, but depositing more than 100 will not give you XP or points for any over that amount. One thing to keep in mind is that this only works when there's someone else in the same Tithe Farm instance, because if you leave and re-enter with no one else in there, it'll reset the instance. You can boost to enter the farming guild as well as every other guild, but you can also boost to get farming contracts. So you can eat a garden pie at level 62 and get into the second tier of the farming guild as well as get a level 65 farming contract. Again on the topic of boosting, it's possible to prolong your boosted stat, which can be very handy when you get that plus 5 construction boost from spicy stews when you're upgrading your house. A few years back, your stat timer reset every time you re-logged, making it really easy to prolong. But Jagex introduced a new system in 2016. Basically, now you have 5 strikes, and after 12 seconds of being logged in, so 1 fifth of a minute, you'll lose a strike. Once you lose all 5 strikes, your stats will go down by 1. With that, you can still prolong your boost, but you have to log out every 10 seconds or so in-game. This is still enough time to move around a few times, do a few actions, and then re-log. And you also have 5 strikes, so if you accidentally go over the 12 second mark, you still have a few more tries. It's nowhere near as easy as it used to be, but still possible. With the semi-recent Hosidius house rework, instead of thieving in the central region of Hosidius, you should make your way east of the market stall area to this house, which has two fruit stalls completely safe from guard dogs. Also, when thieving from the bakery stall in Ardoyan, standing underneath the baker guarantees that you won't get caught by any of the guards. Very useful for level 3s. Solicet mushrooms are the fastest woodcutting XP per hour without tick manipulating and also the fastest way to get fossils from Fossil Island. Well, you can take very little damage and never get poisoned if you understand the mechanic. There's only five active poisonous mushroom spines and they can be distinguished by the ones that have an animation that happens every five seconds. To avoid the poison attack, wait until the animation happens, then start running when the animation finishes. So this is the cooldown phase and you'll never get hit. The tar monsters are the other main damage factor. The hoop snakes can actually be stunned and then picked up and rolled at a tar monster, which stuns them for 30 seconds. This isn't very practical though, since you'll take more damage trying to line up the snake. Instead, you can simply attack the snake and have it aggressive while you're running through the tar swamp. Since another monster is targeting you, the tar monsters won't spawn nor will they attack. Composting your patches isn't only useful for increasing the yield. Compost also reduces the chance of disease. Standard compost reduces the chance by 50% per growth cycle, whereas ultra compost lowers it by 90%. This makes compost super important for patches that you don't pay the gardener for. For example, on an Iron Man with a lot of trees, players choose not to pay the gardener, and sometimes with fruit trees, regular players won't buy the protection since fruit tree seeds are so cheap. Using ultra compost will give a much better chance of that plant surviving. On the creation of your RuneScape account, by default there is no warning given to you when you use high level alchemy on an untradeable item with a low alk value. So I recommend turning this warning on by going to the high alk spell, right clicking, pressing warnings, then enable the untradeable item warning. Another cool tip with the warning setting is in the settings tab, then go to the green guy with the chat bubble and then to the light bulb. Here you see the loot notifications, something handy especially for mobile since you can't use third party clients. If you set the warning to 1 GP, you'll get notified on every single drop, meaning you don't have to right click and check what items you got everywhere. During and after the Legends quest, you can venture beneath the Karazi jungle into the Viveldi caves. In the final room, which requires you to cast any charge orb spell to open the door, there's barrels which have the smash option on them. Well, these barrels have some really interesting drops, and they also spawn a lot of melee monsters. Occasionally, you'll get a pile of raw and cooked fish, which is a great food and cooking XP source for ultimate Iron Men. 
also from the barrels you can get a Paramea ticket, which are a very interesting piece of history for RuneScape. The Paramea ticket allows you to go upstairs in the Shiloh Village pub, which contains multiple beds. Pretty pointless now in old school RuneScape, but back in RuneScape Classic, there was a fatigue system, which gradually rose as you trained any skill. This was used to stop bots, since there was a capture that you had to complete before you finished resting, that was later replaced with random events. When you started your account, you were given a sleeping bag, and general stores sold them as well. This was a slower way to lower your fatigue, and sleeping in a bed was the fastest way to get it back. So this is why you'll notice a lot of bars and houses across places like Varrock and Falador have a lot of beds upstairs. So that's episode 22 of Tips and Tricks for Old School. If you enjoyed or learned something today, drop a like on the video. I received some comments in the past asking how you can submit a tip or a trick. If you go to theoatrix.net slash submit, you can submit anything you find interesting, and you can also leave your YouTube or Twitch channel and your RuneScape name if you want to be recognized in the video. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe for a Tips and Tricks episode every week. Thanks for watching and see you next time.